Hi everyone, my name is Ralf Hack. I'm the founder of Logilica and I'm going to talk to you today about the return of investment for platform engineering activities. More precisely is how can we come to an approach where we measure a little bit more what's the effect of platform engineering and how can we sell it to management to maybe invest more in this, continue investing in this and building out a roadmap. So let's start off right away. Why platform engineering? So one of the first things, obviously, we learned in the recent year, DevOps is dead. Well, even if DevOps is not dead, we know there's a lot of complexity, a lot of challenges that comes along with the DevOps processes, especially if they're kind of run by each team individually. There might be a lot of duplication load on development teams. And all these things that come about um, if you don't sort of have a centralized function around running your tooling, infrastructure, efficiency, and, and so on and so forth. Now, the question is, how do we improve on this? How can we change to a different approach? And obviously, platform engineering as a topic and as a theme coming up is quite important. And it is sort of something a lot of companies like to invest more into. But how do we do this? Well, the first thing is um, you just rename DevOps engineers and they become platform engineers and you do things as you've been doing them all along. But to be honest, that's probably not the best way to go about it. Secondly, I mean, what else is there? You kind of say, OK, let's start from scratch. We burn down the house and afterwards we start from the beginning, reorganize everything and start things from scratch. However, if you take that approach and take it to your management and say, like, you know, this DevOps thing didn't really work out for us. Let's do something completely different. They probably look at you a little bit like that and say, mm, I'm not really sure. What do you mean and why? And, you know, that's kind of a bit of a huge investment and change of the org, maybe. Um, I don't think so. So now the question is, how can you build a case and how do you can you build sort of a roadmap to change from one mode of uh, operation into a different mode? And looking into platform engineering, you know, from a tech point, it's kind of quite simple and straightforward. Um, you know, you say, OK, what does it give us? Well, we might have less silos. We can better reuse components and have a better developer experience such that you know, developers can self-serve, they're happier and more productive. That's quite true. Um, and it's also probably quite important, but that doesn't really give you much of a business case to bring forward to, to say why you should actually change things. Yes, it's nice to have, but what does it mean in terms of numbers? What's the investment for the company and what's sort of the return of that investment? So in order to address this, it might make sense to look a little bit more onto the actual business drivers behind this. And obviously, from a business point of view, I mean, the dollar and the headline figures is important, but it's not everything. And the more you can sort of can create some return of investment based along some business drivers, the easiest is to be an advocate of the change and get the support that's kind of needed. Um, obviously, one of the things that's highly important for business beyond the, the actual dollars is predictability. If you can create a case that says, you know, we get much better accuracy in delivering, in the cost of delivery, in our forecast, and we know better the type of value that we deliver, um, because we now have got a much better understanding and have a much better platform, then this predictability easily translates into predictable business outcomes, which is often quite, quite highly sought after. Um, the other thing is probably the speed or time to market or even time to react and fix issues that we might have and the velocity of the company. You know, if you can have a business case that improves the time to market and basically improves the agility of the company, so that quite often means you can outperform competitors in the same space, you can create much better, create and react much better to market demands, be more flexible there. And again, that's probably something that gets much more traction than sort of having having low level activities uh, that are a bit vague uh, in terms of business outcomes. And I think the other one, which often gets neglected a little bit, is everything around compliance and around risk. 
So that might be security, cybersecurity risk, that might be quality issues, reputational risk, or just simply reporting obligations that can be unified and created much simpler in the course of action. So, and I think if you, from a platform engineering point of view, can create a business case and roadmap around those types um, of themes and align it with that, then that becomes a much easier transition into getting the support that's necessary to execute a proper strategy in that stage. So how then can we measure or how can we create some of those metrics a little bit better to support a business case? Obviously, as, a, as an engineering team, you don't have access to, you know, all the operational data, to the sales, uh, marketing metrics, to some of the revenue drivers. But you have got a lot of value creating metrics in terms of what the engineering teams and you as an engineering organization is actually doing. And if you think back about your delivery pipeline, so you also go through different stages, let's say from the planning to code creating, building, deploying, running the infrastructure. And, you know, some of those uh, themes that I just talked about earlier are not too different in the engineering side as well. So you also want to create value and to have a sense of cost towards that value about creating features, shipping them, security, quality, creating features, ensuring you have the security quality of the product as well as the platform. And then obviously the speed, uh, having no roadblocks, uh, having as little delays as possible in delivering from the initial inception to uh, the actual feature delivery or from delivering sort of the bug fix, fixing up the, the, the environment and being up and running again. So these are sort of similar alignments. And if you then want to look a little bit more into, okay, what should we actually measure? I mean, firstly, that might be quite dependent on your own organization, where you are in the platform engineering sort of maturity, and also where you start looking into first. Do you look first into sort of developer productivity? Do you look more into a platform stability? Is it more on an organizational side or is it sort of on a, on a silo where you start off with? However, I think no matter where you want to start off with, I think the important bit is um, start off with something that management can Google. So that sounds simple, but basically if you create your own framework, your own metrics, that's typically a much harder sell than if you have something, you know, you find a lot of cool hits, something that gets supported by, um, analyst companies such as Gardner or Forrester or something that's just generally well known and NIST has been in the security space, for example, sort of a reference point. Um, if you have something you can piggyback on and you can refer to, that makes it much easier to have this transformational step on saying, okay, let's say we're looking at DORA metrics. So one thing is about the speed to deployment and then the ability to recover if something go goes wrong. And this gives you basically already a couple of, you know, high level reference points you can move back to the initial RIs that you might have defined. Um, another one is maybe the space framework, um, which is more about developer experience, productivity, satisfaction. Maybe you already do some kind of net promoter scores around developer satisfaction. Can you measure this and improve that over time? Um, do you have things that are blocking that's quite often highly regarded in sort of like flow type of frameworks? Do you see how much the velocity, speed, throughput of certain activities are? What is blocking you? Where are you kind of wasting time by waiting on things that might be infrastructure, that might be people, um, that might be coordination overhead? Is there sort of certain things that you think is a particular in your organization you want to improve on? map that back to these, one of these frameworks and then build a RI or a business case around those frameworks. And just as a simple example, and these are really proxy metrics, and you can say these are, I think, proxy metrics, and however, they map back to the next stage up and then the next stage up, which might be the predict more predictable business outcome or speed. Um, one of those things might be lead time, and that could be the lead time from inception of a ticket to or like an issue or we use Jira, for example, until that really becomes a feature that's going to get shipped. 
or it's going to be an incidence that has needs a bug fix that needs a deployment until it gets fixed. So if you can say we improve lead time by, let's say, 20% for a particular class of activities, obviously you can say, okay, this is a proxy metric to how we're improving our speed in terms of fixing our time to market. And that's and also in a similar way, you can look into, let's say, infrastructure. If you don't have each team maintaining their own, own infrastructure, but you can you reuse components or can reuse hardware and you bring it down, let's say 35%. That's obviously directly relatable to cost metrics and to dollars. And similarly, maybe if you just start very low, low level, let's say we know we all do code reviews, um, but because at the moment there's so much chaos and people always jump from doing code reviews to do other stuff to fixing the build server. Um, so quite often these things are the, the least fun bits and they get delayed and maybe also sometimes the least urgent things. If you can measure this, how long does it take for us to start a code review or get through it? If you have a heavy reduction in that one, that also gives you a good uh, indicator about costs being more efficient and improving productivity as well. So we find typically these types of things work quite well. They can be abstracted then up to the next level and build an argument. Um, quite important on that space, I think, is to not do this once in terms of creating and then measuring, but continue and watch out the trends. Ideally, if you can say, look, in the past, before we even started something, it was like this. Now we are doing our first steps and we already see or have a, at least a gut feeling of a difference, even though we might not have measured this over time. Now let's put a framework in place for really measuring some of those things that are important to us and then project it out to the future. So one projecting out, where do you want to be? And the other one is a little bit, how are we tracking according to the goals that we might set ourselves? And these can be just like one, two, three metrics um, that give you some indication how things are going. And that, and as we'll explain this, the next step is going to create then the trust to Communicate, <clears throat> communicate that up and continue going into this. So as a summary and how to build some roadmap to come to our eyes that are specific to your organization and that makes sense for you, and then be on this continuous improvement uh, journey, is to have, define some KPIs and some uh, deliverables. And these don't need to be too much of a stretch goal. Maybe you don't have anything that you currently track continuously that's kind of gets communicated in the, into the right level and just start somewhere. From our point of view, from my point of view, I think it's quite important to make that visible and the simpler, the better. However, it should be not something where you put in a lot of time and effort, but something you can automate around. And that might be just, uh, you know, how many developers do you have? Where do they spend time? How's your infrastructure going? What's your lead time? How's maybe your, your review times coming down? Do something simple. Put that into something that's almost live visible that, and it reports to the right level. So that right level might be your director of engineering or it might be the, some of your, your VP level or even sort of the C level. And you probably need to adjust that messaging. Um, your director of engineering might be great understanding about your review cycles and things like this. Um, your executive might really not care about this and just, you know, how much people time do we have? Where do we make improvements? What can we do instead? And how do we invest more to improve that even further? So. At the same time, I think quite important also is, you know, don't boil the ocean. Pick one or two or three metrics that are important and, you know, be aware of your limitation within the organization as well. So in summary, um, I think your mission is, or uh, the platform engineering mission is to create trust into a tra platform transformational journey, starting from understanding the impact, business impact, creating the right proxy metrics, creating the visibility, and then creating trust, which then in turn comes back to more investment and future improvements in that space. So thank you very much for this quick walkthrough. If you've got any questions, uh, Ralph at Hack, Ralph at uh, logilica.com or in the Slack channel, and I'm happy to talk to you. Thank you very much.